There are plenty of iconic skins in CSGO. The Dragon War, the Corambit, the Weebtacular Akihabara Accept. But no skin in CSGO is more legendary than the M4A4 Howl. That's all Oh my god! Oh my god! Mini side, man. One thing. One more side. Two there, two there. We're gonna think. Bomb down. One side. Two, two more things. Two things. Nice, nice. Cut, cut, cut. Nice. Cool. Oh! Oh! Damn! Damn! Now again. As we've seen so many times before, it's down to Hiko, but against four, is it really possible? We do have a few players quite tagged up here from Luminosity, so Hiko definitely not going down without a fight. Oh wow, there's the first for Hussfrag! Hiko gets the double! There's still two players left, they got no health on them! 13 and 3! Hiko... Creeping around the site now, there's still time. To t oh my goodness, how does he do this?! How does Hiko do it again?! When Valve introduced the skin market back in 2013, no one could have ever predicted that one day, a skin would sell for six figures. How could that even be possible? Well, to answer that, we have to go back to the very beginning of CSGO skins. Eight years ago, Valve rolled out skins as part of the arms deal update for CSGO. Following in the footsteps of Team Fortress 2, where Valve first experimented in microtransactions with hats, it was only a matter of time before CSGO got a virtual marketplace of its own. Unlike pretty much any other games out there, Valve games use the Steam Workshop to allow people to submit their own skins and those that are popular enough can actually make it into the game. This has led to tons of amazing skins making it into CSGO, even though most of what's out there is not great. Anyway, the skin workshop was a great idea, but like all great ideas, it didn't take long for people to start abusing the system. And there's no more glaring instance of people abusing the skin market than the story of CSGO's most coveted, most controversial, and most legendary skin, the M4A4 Howl. These, weapon, these weapons will never uh, be obtainable again. You can't get them from a uh, trade-off contract, you can't get them from the Huntsman case, obviously, since they've got replaced and uh, you know they're they've just become really rare now it all started back in 2014 when steam users Ozzy and six submitted the original howling dawn sticker and m4a4 howl skin to the market their submission received 4,500 upvotes which was more than enough for the howl to be included in the upcoming huntsman collection Ozzy said the inspiration for his work came from a picture of his dog which well i think youtuber jesus put it best this is your dog? Your dog looks like this? Do you have Cerebus as a pet or something? How has this thing not killed you yet? Another YouTuber, Alex J. Gate, offered a similar sentiment. I don't know what kind of dog this guy has, right? But that's not, like, it doesn't look like a dog to me. Like, come on, that, the face of that thing looks like a snake, a, an alligator slightly, but not a dog, what the hell? Anyway, weird looking dog aside, people did like the skin. It was relatively popular and it did look cool. But then, just a few weeks later, something strange happened. Not even a month after the Howl came out, Valve was slapped with a DMCA takedown notice from a DeviantArt user named Canis Albus. The young Finnish artist posted the following to their blog. Looking familiar? Someone has stolen one of my artworks to make a custom skin for a gun in a game called Counter-Strike Global Offensive. The name of the weapon is M4A4 Howling Dawn. I'm just letting you know that I did design this piece, but I didn't upload the items to the Steam Marketplace, and the spineless worm who submitted it didn't have my permission to do so. However, I've reported both copyright infringements, and I'm hoping that the items will be removed soon. Valve was obviously a little bit nervous about how all this would affect their burgeoning skin economy, so they acted quickly. Ozzy and Sick got lifetime community banned. They would receive no proceeds from the sales of their skins, and Valve also tightened up their rules around intellectual property. But here's where things get really interesting. For owners of the M4A4 Howl and Howling Dawn sticker, those items have been replaced by an alternative designed by the CSGO team. These items will never be produced again and have been assigned the contraband rarity. So instead of just wiping out all memory of the Howl completely and deleting it from the game forever, Valve instead decided to put the skin in its own special category, thus making it one of the most desirable and rarest skins on the market. To get more insight on this really strange chain of events, we reached out to the champion of the skin trading community, Zipple. 
you have the uh, distinctive label, the orange label that is contraband that they made specifically for the skin, which is to me kind of absurd that they went out of the way to make a completely new category of, of, of exterior just to, no, not of exterior, of um, rarity. Uh, just for a stolen artwork that they redesigned, right? So that that in the first place is kind of absurd and, and and something that I think nobody would have guessed that they would ever do. So I think that adds obviously to the the mystique of of, uh, of the Hell. And then not only that, the redesign I believe was much better than the original design, and it's still, you know to many people the best looking M4 in the game. And while the Howl is by no means the only skin to have been put in CSGO that infringed on someone's copyright, it is the only one that's ever been labeled contraband. Take the M4 Griffin, for example. While it's not as blatant a ripoff as the Howl was, the Griffin did receive a DMCA takedown notice because it turned out to be traced from another artist's work. But as YouTuber Jesus explains in another video, Valve's reaction to the Griffin was totally different. There was a lot of very excited investors convinced that the Griffin was going to be the next contraband skin. And now, Valve did not make the Griffin contraband. They just changed the artwork and left it as a restricted skin in the Vanguard collection. Today, you can get your hands on a factory new StatTrack M4 Griffin for about $35. Between the fact that it never got the sexy contraband label or the possibility that there were just more Griffins out there before the copyright controversy happened, the Griffin never got the same eye-popping price tag as the Howl. And don't worry, we'll get to the six figures thing. At the end of the day, most skins don't gain their value through controversy. They get it because of hype. Take Skadoodle's Dragon Lore, for example. This skin encapsulates the moment where Cloud9 became the first North American major champions ever. They weren't the favorites. They were the underdogs. They were a heavy underdog, but they did it for North America. Skadoodles won the major! It's understandable why skin traders at the time wanted to own a piece of CSGO history. And it might even explain why someone shelled out $61,000 for the skin. But even that pales in comparison to what an M4A4 Howl goes for. Because last year, a Chinese skin collector bought one for $100,000. The skin also came with four incredibly rare I Buy Power Katowice 2014 stickers slapped on the side, making it one of the most valuable pieces of CSGO memorabilia in history. Now, some of you might be saying that none of it is real, that the skins are just a bunch of polygons on your computer and you don't really own anything. But Zippo doesn't think the price is that crazy. It makes sense because the the M4 in question there was a really low float, uh, non-dupe with you know four stickers that will cost you sixty thousand dollars to apply. So the if you consider the base price of these that are factory new, how the, they were applied to um, with the stickers, the price point is not really that absurd to me. Zippel suggests that the price of skins has been skyrocketing because of China's growing interest in CS:GO. Um, the value of high tier items are also reaching all time highs propped by the purchasing power of China. So examples here could be that two uh, of the same Star Trek Minimum Wear 661 uh, Scar Pattern AKs with four Titan Hollows sold for 150k each within a week of each other. And you have multiple sales uh, reaching more than 100k on, on four Titan Holo items, four Abba Power Holo items. You have Souvenir Dragon Lore selling for 100k. So it is not slowing down at all. Over the past year, the supply of high-tier CSGO items like Dragon Wars, Howls, and Rare Knives have been bought up by Chinese collectors in droves. It is very evident that it's concentrated in China because every time there is there is uh, good news from China in terms of like, you know, them introducing the official version of CS in China, high-tier skins go up. When there is Chinese New Year and they need to take some time off or spend time with their family or whatever, skins drop. It's just, you can literally follow like the Chinese vacations and stuff like that with how the market performs. It's crazy. Although other sales have already dwarfed the 100K Howl from last year, the M4A4 Howl is still probably the most valuable skin in CSGO when you subtract stickers, specific patterns, and souvenir items from the equation. It's crazy to think that this all started because Valve had a really weird response to someone stealing some art from another person who had no interest in Counter-Strike to begin with. Maybe the Howl has become so valuable because of how crazy this whole story is. But maybe it's so valuable because it just looks really cool. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.